Hey guys, Mike here. So I hope everybody got what they wanted for Christmas. I hope everybody had a safe Christmas. As I heard up north in the U.S., you guys got like crazy amounts of snow. I heard it was blizzards in some parts, power knocked out everywhere. And, you know, I feel like a wimp saying, I mean, I mean, it got to 20 here and I was freezing. My family's freezing. So I don't know how you guys do it up north, but I guess you're just used to it. Maybe that's what it is. But let me know down in the comments if everything was good and safe with you. I'm sure we all want to know. And this is going to be a jam-packed video because obviously I couldn't do one Friday, didn't do one Sunday. And so I got a lot of stuff in this, including a very important indicator, uh, charts, what to look for. This, this is coming up, not like this seven days or the, the, end, the end of this year, but January is going to be in it crucial uh, month for the market for a number of reasons and i'm also going to present something to you food for thought right because what's supposed to happen at the end of the first quarter is supposed to be earnings apocalypse right that's what's supposed to bring us down the the moment right that we, we finally really just rock it down and break the uh june july lows whatever it is and so i'm gonna give you something to think about on that and you know i'm gonna start off with this Congratulations to the short sellers of Tesla. I mean, they've been raking in the dough. I think 15 billion or something like that is what people are estimating them uh, to have made so far. And God knows because short sellers have been getting destroyed before 2022 when it came to Tesla, right? And just kept running up. And I'm gonna be posting this chart and along with a whole bunch of others in the Patreon and Discord tonight. But figure what the heck, I'll put it in here. And this is on the 30 minute chart of Tesla. And you want to allow, you know, because what do stocks do? They contract and they expand, contract and expand. Expansion can go up or down. And you can just see on this 30 minute chart, man, contract, expand, contract, expand, contract, expand. And now here we are contracting and setting us another support level. And what's it going to do? You know, what are short sales? Because I can guarantee you, short sales, they may, may get out to reshore, but I don't know. I think they're going to try to ride this thing down. And the one thing you got to do, I know when people see the stock price, here, a lot of people say, man, this is cheap, you know, and, and it could be however you're looking at. But remember, there's been two splits. I believe it's a five and one and three and one. Right. So eight for one total. And so you got to start thinking about this because people see Amazon, they go, man, that's super cheap. But they're not looking at it pre-split. Right. What What's the actual number if you were going to see this pre-split? Right. Because remember, just the splits don't create any more value or anything. It just makes the price look uh, more sexy to you and cheaper and people buy in. Right. But and so when you look at it though, uh, it's, it's a lot more expensive uh, than where it's at now when you look at pre-split, right? And so I heard one of the biggest short sellers of Tesla less than two weeks ago, I think, before it went on this massive crash down like this, was like, still like 1800 That was like two weeks ago or something, pre-split, which, I mean, so you guys yourself, like, how many shares of Tesla would you buy if it was sitting at 1800 versus where it's at now? Or, and that's why a lot of people are picking between 80 and 90 to be the bottom, not right now. But eventually, right, if we do get an earnings apocalypse, blah, 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 and all that stuff. Because remember, what they've been doing, everything they can, try to get rid of inventory, sales, get those fourth quarter numbers up. And they usually do report good earnings, right? And so if that happens, you know, people will rush in and everything. But the other one, you know, pay attention to this one. This came out Friday. And I always talk about this one. I've covered it many times. But, um, you know, the conference board leading economic index is down 5% in November. Again, I mean, it just keeps dropping, right? But this right here, we just want you to pay attention to it. It has a 100% win rate when it comes to anticipating recessions. And what's crazy is uh, it's actually predicting a recession right now the way it's going like by March of 2023, which is a lot sooner than I think. I, th I thought it was going to be. I was thinking between like June and I don't know, maybe July to September, I think is where I was thinking it was going to fall. But that would be interesting if that happens. Keep that on your watch list and stuff. And Friday did not surprise me. Again, I didn't get to do a video Friday or Sunday because I put this in the Discord. And what happened, well, you saw a lot of bullish candles, a lot of hammer candles forming on some big stocks. And so that's why Friday and what happened? We, we were green on, on every index, right? It wasn't some huge move. But it was not surprising just because you saw increasing volume going into the close and all these hammer candles forming it was a bunch of them and if you're new here please hit that subscribe button really appreciate it and if you're getting anything out of this please hit the like and think about sharing the video guys and don't forget i think you got five days left on this right now seeking alpha still running the 39 dollar uh special that's for the whole year it's normally 239 so i don't know three dollars and 39 cents or something like that a month for it or whatever and if you've never been on the site obviously the ones i like to use but you got the trending top stocks i have two screeners i use you can create whatever screen you want to use stock ideas always helps me especially being an investor plus running a channel like this so i always like to do that one the etfs because i'm always looking for new different types of etfs and then of course education i'm huge on that anything i can learn i love to learn so check that out 
It's in the description. You want to sign up. $39 for the entire year this year. And it will end on December 31st. And so now that leads us into, you know, a bunch of different things here. But the one I'm going to talk about is this. What's supposed to happen? This is where I want to get your, your thoughts in the, in the comments and stuff. And as always, I try to think down the road. So you got all these, you know, big companies there saying, oh, man, it's going to be an apocalypse when it comes to earnings for the first quarter. Not the fourth quarter, but the third quarter. So what are we going to do? Right. And oh, my goodness, all this, that and the other. Well, here, here's the thing I would say. And this is my question. I don't really understand where they're getting that from. And the reason why I say that is, and hear me out, and, and please let me know in the comments, you know, I'd like to learn from you guys and stuff, because I'm one dude here, and wear a lot of hats. So think about this. I look at this, like, 2022. What brought down earnings for 2022 and made them so rough, right? So let's, in no certain order, strong dollar, right? A lot of these companies, the big mega caps, are global. And so every time they would convert that money back into U.S. currency, they were losing right to the bottom line. And so just based off that, all right, so we had the dollar. Well, well, okay, gotcha. China was shut down, which means they weren't making anything. We weren't out spending. Their people weren't out spending, all this other stuff, right? So that, that was rough. That was, that was big time rough. Uh, what else do we have here? We had the uh, expenses, right, where people had hired way too much, expanded way too much, spent all this stuff, you know, thinking we were just going to the moon, and all of a sudden that didn't happen. Everything starts contracting, so, so that was a big problem, right? They're spending too much money, hiring too many people. And so we got there right there. And then four, of course, here in the U.S., tight labor market and all that good stuff where people were still, you know, were all year been able to demand raises or they'll leave and get even a, a bigger raise and people can't find enough help. And then, of course, fifth is going to be your rate hikes, these huge 75 basis point rate hikes, four in a row, right? Went from zero to, I think we're at four and a half now, I believe it is, or somewhere in there, 4.25 4 to 4.5, I believe. And so that's a problem. And so now we're going to 2023, right? So what's going ahead? Remember, the, the market thinks ahead, right? It tries to see ahead three to six months so we can price it in. And so as the apocalypse is happening, the market starts to move up. And you go, what's going on, right? We've seen it many times. So now let's go through those. The dollar. I think that was the high 115, 116, somewhere in there. Well, last time I looked, it was like 103, and it's struggling to maintain that. So the dollar has weakened. So what is that going to do, as Nike said? More to the bottom line, all right, when they convert all those overseas sales back into U.S. dollars, assuming it, it maintains, let's say it just maintains 103, or say between like 103, 105, something like that. That's gone. Oh, I'm sorry. It's number six, inflation. All right, so let's go ahead and hit number six real quick. Inflation, what happened? Peaked in July, it was, June, July. And been coming down ever since, right? So that's not really a, a huge story. It's sticky as can be, still way too high, by the way. And so, but that's coming down. The PC came out Friday, and all the, the different input costs for these companies have started to come down, and they still continue to come down, just not as fast as people want, right? Um, China, what's going on in China? We see right here, China has been opening up, right? What they just announced today was anybody going into China now doesn't have to quarantine. Not going to worry about that. Uh, not expecting to do a lot of the tests, even though I will say, and I'll, I'll kind of go into this in just a minute, just give me a second. Uh, that's probably not going very well for them right now, to say the least. Uh, interest rates, no more 75 basis point rate hikes. We're not going to be at the most, what, 5.1, 5.2 at the most. And so we're got 0.7 at the max rate hikes. And imagine what's going to happen if they don't go all the way to 5.2 if they just do what we're gonna do 25 basis points maybe another 50 basis point hike so we're not so that's kind of a, a almost like a it's a it's a headwind because of where it's gonna be at but as far as what the market looks at as far as these huge uh rate hikes and scaring the day out at everybody that's pretty much gone right because it's already in there it's kind of baked in the cake right now and so what let's think about that uh over hiring what's happening on the white collar side layoffs cutting hours cutting benefits What's happening to CapEx? CapEx, excuse me, cutting it. Boom. Expand and forget about it. Get rid of that warehouse. Get rid of that warehouse plan. Get rid of this office building. We're done with that. All right, so now they're cutting expenses. And so did I cover all of them? Because it was a whole bunch, right? A whole bunch of headwinds in 2022, which is where you think the apocalypse would happen, by the way. But it didn't. And so going into Q1, when I'm, when I'm, I'm just putting this out of food for thought, if you're telling me companies are cutting costs, and I mean a lot of cost, right? Billions and billions, okay, are getting cut, all right? Many layoffs have already happened and are going to continue to happen. No more huge interest rate hikes. The inflation's already peaked, coming down, sticky as can be. It's going to take a lot longer to get down than people think. 
China's opened up, which means their shipping ports are open, which means the warehouses supposedly are open. Whether that's going to stay, we'll see, and I'll show you that in just a minute. All right? And so, what else? Oh, strong dollar. The dollar's weakening. The dollar's under a huge attack from all these other countries trying to strengthen their currencies. Okay? And so, there you go. So, if all that is not a headwind anymore, and it's more, I won't say it's a tailwind, but it's not a huge you know, problem... And so if revenues, which we expect to come down, I expect revenue to come down. But what I'm saying is you might see a lot of companies miss the revenue, right? That's fine. But I don't mean they're going to miss the bottom line because if you're cutting all these expenses out, the number one is the employee, right? And their benefits and stuff. And you're cutting all CapEx, all this other stuff is going to wayside and you're able to convert more and keep more, at least on the, the paperwork here, when you're converting your overseas revenue back into U.S. dollars, and your expenses going in, as far as the input costs are coming down, especially if it happens in January, February, March, it just keeps coming down, whether it's a little bit or not, it don't matter. It wasn't what it was in June or July. Then you start to sit there, and I start to step back and go, where is the apocalypse on the earnings? I mean, the, the revenue is going to have to just plummet. It's going to have to fall off a cliff for people to just panic and go, oh, my God. You know, so that's just what I'm trying to figure out. Where Where is the apocalypse? Am I missing something? Like, what what is the headwind? going for 2022 besides we're supposed to be weakening and all that stuff because you know i don't know and that's what i'm saying in the comments you know put what's going on I know everybody wants it to happen and trust me i wish a guy we would just sell off and go down 20 percent like tomorrow or something and be done with this mess right but again to me this is like the dot combo it's this slow bleed out right and so unless something apocalyptic happens like a bank goes under or whatever a morgan stanley some crazy mess around the world happens, which definitely could happen because the Fed is still lowering the balance sheet. Those rate hikes haven't kicked in yet. We don't feel it. I'm just talking about earnings. Earnings. Why are they going to all of a sudden just fall off a cliff in one quarter in three months time frame if all the other stuff is that those headwinds have just come down? I don't I don't understand that. And so, and we'll see about fourth quarter. Maybe fourth quarter you look at it and go, oh, well, well, never mind. But, you know, when I see Nike saying, no, no, we're going to keep another 5%. To the bottom line, just because the tower weakening, and that's all they're talking about. And what they also say, supply chain issues, their biggest problem was easing a lot. And so I'm just saying, certain sectors, yes, will get obliterated because they're just that's just what happens. But I just I don't get it. So let me know in the in the comments what you see, what you see happening and stuff. And now getting into China, and what I was talking about was, you know, I've talked this before, but you you can see plain as day, and I think this is where money. Another thing I'm kind of curious about is. Money's rolling out of this is the QQQ and C web or K web, excuse me. So K web is basically uh, Chinese internet stocks, and of course QQQ is tech stocks, right? And you can see as the Qs just kept trading sideways up and up and down, you know K web end up going up a lot, and now what's it doing? It's consolidating. Okay, it's not plumbing. It's sitting there consolidating. Don't know where it's going to go because if you get headlines like this, you know this just came out yesterday china estimates 250 million people caught covid 19 since the zero covid policy and then this came out today or actually i'm sorry sunday on christmas day packed out to use crowded crematoriums and covid rolls over china right and so i don't know you know and this is where you get in trouble i remember this this is what happened here if you just started to get your icus rolled over i don't know what kind of health care they got there that's when things become a problem and you know the reason why a lot of money is rolling in china i told you this is the business cycle and we talk about this a lot in the discourse stuff i keep bringing it up and i will continue to bring it up and this will be going forth for the rest of my investment life this is what i will follow it's plain as day and it's the business cycle the reason why is because where china is at compared to the u.s there's china way over there see where things are they're kind of at that bottom trying to recover the u.s is way back here okay they say China's already been through a recession or maybe just trying to still in it, but trying to come out of it. And stocks tend to go up before recessions are over and the U.S. is not. And so that's something we got to keep in mind. Now, of course, again, I've read all kinds of crazy mess. I don't know what to believe coming out of that country. And I don't know medically what kind of healthcare system they got. And if I've even read like Asians are more susceptible to it, but I don't know if that's true. I have no idea. And so and maybe that's why they just keep having this problem. Because here, you know, we don't even talk about it anymore. I, I don't, anybody I know, we don't talk about it. We don't really hear about it that much. And so, you know, let me know if, uh, if it's bad in your area or something, but or I don't know if it's because they don't do vaccinations. I just don't know. And so, you know, but that's my other curiosity was like, well, how much money is rolling out of the U.S. stock market and from these big firms and rolling 
into you know an india or some kind of emerging market or china because they're in a different you know part of the business cycle right now we're still trying to figure out which we know we're between two phases we're in like one phase trying to tra transition to another phase which is phase one when bonds take off and stocks and commodities drop because bonds have been taken off where they can continue and that's what we got to see because we've seen false breakouts before and like oh here we are and then everything just goes to heck in a handbasket right and so, but that is, that's something, if you didn't learn about it, learn about it. It'll probably make you a lot of money. And these are charts where it's taking a, a larger view of what's happening in the market. And one thing to look out for, not this month, but next month, because we know we're going to close red this month probably, but it's looking at, do, do we eventually in January, February, and March close below the 50 moving average on the S&P 500's monthly chart. That's what we're looking for. And what happens is this has something to do with the kiss of death being reconfirmed once it falls below and closes below that level and breaks a certain level. And we'll talk about that because we've got plenty of time to go into that because it was unconfirmed once it did that run up. And so a lot of people think it will and then a lot of people don't think it, it, don't think it won't. And so we'll have to see. And the other one is on the cues, this logarithmic scale, this trend line is still sitting there. Hadn't broke below it, so that's something we're going to be looking at. And then the Dow coming up here, this is the weekly, and it's sitting right on the 50 moving average right there and still sitting right on top of that channel there. So it has every reason to bounce, and you can see the RSI turning back up on the weekly. Didn't get below the 50. And so remember, the Dow's been leading the way, right, which is something that's been very curious to a lot of people because they say, oh, we're in this bottom process. Can we go to all-time new highs of the market? And you're kind of going... Look what people are positioned in, you know, and maybe these are going to be the new leaders, right? Coming out of a, a terrible market, you get new leaders. I mean, this is where people are going to go, but a lot of people are more they're going into value and safe play and defensive plays and stuff like that. And so that's really what you're looking at. And I'll show you in more depth right here. And because this is what I was talking about, just to give you a, a picture, I always like to say a picture is worth a thousand words. This is Apple. Again, we ain't doing no, no sell off in the S&P, no apocalypse, but nothing until Apple falls. And this is the rest of those other FANG stocks, Meta, Amazon, Netflix, Google. If Microsoft was here, it'd be almost right below Apple. And so until those shoulders are, are you know, being taken out to the woodshed, you know, we can forget about any apocalyptic anything. All right. Them and oil stocks. That don't happen. We just going sideways, consolidating and all everything else. So there's nothing major drop. I don't see how in the world we end up breaking um, the lows we've already set for the year if those two don't drop and the oil stocks don't drop. I don't, I don't see how you do it. All right. Because the other, the other stocks have already been taken out to the woodshed. They can still drop. But again, just because their weight, it's going to be really tough to get down there. And Apple is showing you know it's, it's definitely a lot of weakness there. there's no doubt about that and then going into 2023 with that tax on stock buybacks you know how how will that affect if these companies are buying their stock back or not that's a good question that's what we got to see as well okay but you know let me know what you think in the comments about the earnings part of this you know what do you see happening i mean obviously it could be something i'm just not seeing uh big picture wise and maybe revenue is going to drop way 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 more than i thought you know, again, I think it's going to be sector by sector, of course, uh, that this is happening. But, you know, we'll see. And so tomorrow, market opens back up. We'll see. We only got, what would it be, 27, 28, 29. So four days, right? Because it's so weird, right? There's Christmas Eve and Christmas, and then it'll be New Year's Eve and then New Year's Day fall on both Saturday and Sunday. Like, how often does that happen? I can't even remember the last time that's happened, but maybe it's more often than I thought. But anyway so we don't got too many days left in this year but we'll see we'll see what happens all right we'll see what happens so uh anyway hit the like subscribe button if you got anything out of this i certainly appreciate it don't forget to look down there uh, if you want to take advantage of that seeking alpha special at 39 dollars. and i'll see you guys tomorrow Dude.